Hi friends, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra here at the 338 Club at C2 Tactical in Scottsdale. Today's Sunday gear review, the Teutonic Mailbox, the Steiner MPS Optic. Big Tech's Ordnance is my go-to source for accessories for all your defensive and competition firearms. They have great holsters with accessories for concealment and ship fast at great prices. I'm a proud customer and recommend them without hesitation. Hey, many thanks to Big Tech's Ordnance for sponsoring our Sunday gear review. I am out here testing this dot. And for some people, a closed emitter is really important on a pistol mounted optic. Now, I think it's a, a question for another day as to whether it really is all that important. I think for concealed carriers, um, I don't know that it necessarily is, but if you want a closed emitter dot, uh, Steiner has made this MPS, which is kind of now the newest one in the market. Of course, I think the standard one, if you were, you know, kind of going, well, well, which one would be kind of the standard closed emitter optic? It would probably be the Aimpoint Acro P2. Um, but this one has come onto the market as well. And I picked one up at a heck of a deal just to kind of show you guys what it is, give it a little bit of a test, and also test this right armory IDOT sighting system because it had a different footprint. So I suppose in some sense, we're kind of testing the right armory IDOT, uh, you know, dot mounting system on the P30 as well. This is a P30 long boy, a long slide that they put that IDOT system on there and I got a, a acro plate for it installed on there, no problem, super easy, put this MPS on there. And of course, Steiner is a, a very well respected uh, part of the industry in terms of optics you know, long gun optics and those kinds of things, they make fantastic glass. And so uh, this guy has a retail right around 500 bucks. Um, you might be able to pick it up on sale a little bit cheaper than that, but I would expect it to be about 500 bucks. So you're probably talking, you know, somewhere in the Trigicon RMR category, a little less than the SRO, a little bit more than something like a Holosun. I'm gonna try to be careful not to point a gun at my hand here. Uh, and, and we're here on the 338 Club all by ourselves. That is a, a, a bulletproof wall that I'm pointing the gun at. Um, that you'll notice, okay, so here is this a Langdon, uh, my LTT Elite uh, P30. And if I, I, I kind of show you there, this obviously co covers it up completely. If I put it there so that you can see it, kind of the, the front of the optic on the top of the gun there, I think you can probably see the fact that obviously as a closed emitter optic, it's it's got a bigger footprint. And of course it's got a bigger footprint to enclose the emitter. <laughs> and that's what it's for, right? That's what they're doing that for. And, and for some people that's important because they worry about crap getting in their emitter and especially like, you know, snow or, uh, you know, water, something like that. Now, personally, I don't think it's that big a deal for concealed carriers. I think that if you're openly carrying a firearm, you know, you're a law enforcement officer or you believe in open carry and you want to do that, then maybe it's a little bit bigger deal. Though I think a crumb catcher makes that a little bit better. I know some people think that uh, they worry about humid environments, you know, temperature changes, fogging up, those kinds of things. And that's going to affect the glass on this, just like it would affect the glass on an open emitter. And so you make sure that you put, you know, an anti-fog coating on that before you do that. All that to be said. Now, what do we make of the, the clarity of the optic itself? I, I will say it's a bit of a kind of a, you know, a mailbox on the back of this there. I think having the enclosed emitter, you know, might kind of make it stick out a little bit at the top when you're trying to conceal it, whether you're concealing an appendix like I do, or you are doing it, you know, strong side, maybe might be a little bit of an issue. Um, as far as the optic itself, you can see that uh, the window here, we have some lower third co-witness uh, iron sights on the bottom of it, is relatively decent size and uh, the optical clarity on the glass is fantastic. The dot looks good. As far as all of the specs on it, 3.3 minute of angle dot. So it's a, it's a relatively precise dot. Not, you know, it's not a little tiny one minute dot or anything like that, but it's not too bad. Uh, you're talking on this guy, it's got a CR1632 battery, so not quite the battery life you might get out of a CR2032. This is something like 13,000 hours, which is plenty of battery life, guys. You, you know you should replace batteries every year. Um, just do it on your birthday or the, you know, January 1st or, or pick a day, Independence Day, you know, an Independence Day is dot day, you know, battery maintenance day or whatever. Put it on your calendar, replace your dot batteries. 13,000 hours will get you more than enough for all of that. I will say, it seems to sit, because it's tall, it seems to sit a little bit high and see a little bit high in my vision because I'm used to running a Holosun 507C uh, in green. And also, I'm not super used to running DOT. I run the circle only on my Holosun 507. That's what I'm used to seeing. 
So uh, it's kind of interesting in terms of seeing it. Now, glass clarity on this guy is great. I'm gonna see if I can get some pictures here of how the dot looks through the window. Um, looks good, sees good. You can, uh, you know, get through it. Not so much around it that it like occludes your vision, especially and particularly if you've taught yourself to be target focused. So uh, from all those perspectives, not bad. So here you can see what that dot looks like and through the window. So if I extend that out a little ways and we're still looking down there at the target, you know, you kind of see it might a little bit, but of course you're not looking stereoscopically right now because you're looking at a video rather than looking at the actual target itself uh, and using stereoscopic vision for that. But the, the window's big enough. I've done a little dry fire with this guy uh, just to kind of get a feel for how the dot looks and, and it looks fine. Let's just, you know, put a few rounds through it. You know, I'm not gonna do an Aaron Cowan torture test. Do you wanna see a Cowan torture test? Go watch Aaron's videos. You should be watching Sage Dynamics anyways. He's a good dude and he's got uh, good information. So. Now I will say whew, that this big optic does give you quite a bit of purchase in uh, you know, slide manipulation. So it's like having a mailbox on the back of your gun. Let's just see if we can see it okay. Yeah, I mean, the dot comes through nice and, and bright and, and crisp and I don't have any problem catching it at all. Okay, <laughs> that last one was a heck of a flinch. Ha, funny enough, you could see the fact that, so here's my point of aim, here's these, ignore those, that's just me playing reindeer games, but uh, you, what you can see the fact is, you know, shooting not quickly by any stretch, but you know, with a little bit of rapidity with a stock limb trigger, um, I need to adjust the zero. I haven't even zeroed this gun yet. These are just the first shots that I got through it. So, I, you know, I think that let's do a few more and let's adjust that dot a little bit. Indoor range dog days of summer here in Phoenix and my glasses are fogging up just because even though it's air conditioned in here, it's still a little warm, a little humid. All right, let's uh, give a few clicks on there. Let's see how we're doing now. I just want to get it dialed in just 10 yards offhand. See what we're looking at here. Okay, that's three. Let's just get a view of that. A little bit more care that time. You know, first ones I just wanted to see what the dot was doing. So guess what? Three here. Now I need to come uh, in a little bit more and down a little bit more, but I'm getting close. I need to come left an inch. So that means four clicks uh, because we are a minute of angle per click. Probably need to come down three clicks because a minute a click. All right, run it back out there. I didn't mean for this to be a video on how to zero your dot, but uh, you know, when you are time to zero your dot, I tend to zero uh, 10 yards offhand, is tend to, I, I tend to zero my dots at 10, and you know, take a few shots, get an idea, make a rough amount of adjustment, dial it in, you know, shoot a few, dial it in some more, shoot a few again, see how we do. So let's just see where we're at from this one. <sighs> Maybe a touch top left there. There we go. I think we got it on this try. Note the top left one that I called a little bit. Three in the X there. We'll call that good for now. That's, that's certainly a, an acceptable zero kind of at this level. Let's shoot a couple more magazines through it. Oh, let's just kind of get one with a little bit of, of speed to it and just see what we do. Let's shoot the test. Okay, here we go. That's 11, let's do 10. All right, we're gonna go for the bottom left one. This is gonna be the test, just to kind of feel the dot out a little bit. Let's see what we got here. All right, shoot it ready. Okay, there was 10 shots, 7.67 seconds. So you can see that my first shot was, uh, you know, a one flat that I'm running. One second, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.9. Um, and you can see here, shot a 99 on that one, had that one that was out. Meh, you might call that one out too. But looks like a 99 3X to me. And I'm just offhand and again, standard limb trigger. So uh, what do I think of this dot throughout all that? So initial thoughts, 
I think it's perfectly viewable. I think that the glass quality, I, you, I don't note any color coming through the glass at all. So it doesn't have a tint or a tinge at all. I really like that. I think it was super easy to zero in. You've got big, you know, clicks here, that standard kind of, you know, one minute of angle adjustments. And that was really good. I think the dot is visible and good, bright, eight brightness settings. So you can pick the one that's right for you. I tend to turn mine up a little bit and put up with the blooming for that. Super easy to mount. Um, you know, it's mounting on the Acro mount plate, which is, you know, just a, an adjustment piece right here. So super easy to do that. Um, you know, MSRP they're saying is about 575. I think you find these on the street right about 500 bucks. Is it going to get me to change? Nope, sure not. I'm going to stay with my 507C green in circle only. But if you wanted a closed emitter optic, um, I, I think that uh, this one is definitely one you might you might consider.